So, now, how are we going to do this test? Well, first thing I use is two plastic cups because I don't like to do dishes. That way I know they're clean and they don't have contaminants to mess up my test. So the first thing I do is I go out and I take a soil sample, a representative soil sample from the area that I'm concerned about. It takes three or four corners of dirt from different places in the field, mix them together, and fill this glass half full of soil. Yes? Six inches. Basically, the, the, the root growth area where your primary nutrients are taken from. Excellent question. There's nothing wrong with that one. Now, the next thing you do is you acquire some water. And you put water in this cup to the level of the soil in this cup over here. So you got an equal by volume. And it isn't that critical. Okay? Then, you put water in this here cup here, half up to the level of the soil. And then the next thing you do, and remember this, and this is very critical, you measure the conductivity of this water. Because you want water that set, reads less than 10 on your conductivity meter. So if you go to town and you buy bottled water or use well water or whatever it is, you may have readings of two and 3,000. <coughs> and you put that in that soil, you're going to have a reading over 1,000, and then you're going to say, whoa, wait a minute here, what's going on, you know? So it's a critically important to have water with a very low conductivity. So I don't care where you get it. The simplest thing you do is measure it with a meter, okay? Now, with every meter, there is some test solutions to test the meter to see to it's working properly through a, through a certain range. Usually this, like this meter here is set up for, from uh, 0 to 2,000 and it's a digital readout, direct readout. <laughs> now, if the electrode gets dirty, contaminated, and this type thing, you'll get false readings. So you, once in a while you need to put a test solution in it. It'll say you've got a test solution, you put two or three drops in it. Uh, you've got to have no clean water though and see if it'll read 1,000, because it may read 1,500 or it may read 500. And there's a little uh, set screw on the top here to turn it to get it so it's standing back to where it should be. So that's critically important. And the other thing that's critically important is that when you finish doing a test to clean the electrodes with clean water, the water you use, the pure water, really rinse them real good, and then shake it out real good and then uh, so you can use it next time. Now, any questions up to this point? This is one I don't want any of you to miss. Now, once we get it figured out that we got the, the water, the proper water and this type thing, then what we want to do is take, and take the water and pour into the soil or the soil into the water. I don't know which way, you know, some of you make a cake backwards and some of you make cake forwards. You know, it's just a question of which direction you want to start from. As a veterinarian, I usually start at the head and skin an animal and some start at the tail. So in the end it's the same, but when uh, cooking, I know one thing is if you start at the wrong end of the recipe, it don't taste the same as at the other end, so I do know that. Okay. Now, you swirl or turn this, uh, usually it's nice to have a plastic stirrer or a glass rod works the best, to be honest with you, if you want to really, really get down to the nitty gritty, and you stir this mixture. Get it stirred up real good. Usually, it takes about 30 seconds to be sufficient to get stirred up. That's normally enough. Then you take off the cap off your uh, electrodes, there's a cap on them, just like this here. And you take and you put the meter down in, and you don't, you try to keep it off the bottom. Keep it up just a little bit off the bottom of the, of the container. And you shake it a little bit, and then you look at the meter. And then you wait until it stabilizes. And so it'll kind of go up and down and move around, but after a while, sometimes it, some soils it takes longer than others. I don't know if I can explain that, but anyway, it does. 
until it stabilizes, and then you get a reading. And then you record that. And what we did on that one over there, anyways, we kept readings and every day. And I've got the sheet up here. And according to this here, I'll just read you just a few of them just to give you a little flavor of what's going on. And the first day, we took the reading.